Hey guys, Mish here, and I know it's been a really long time, but today I have a study for you on weight gain from overeating on fat versus carbs. So I sort of have a hybrid goal for this video, and one is to share with you some cool results, or some potentially cool results, and also to help give you some examples of the kinds of things you might want to look out for when reading studies, or some problems that might arise in the way people make conclusions off of these types of studies and the types of statistics done here. So this study looks at what happens when you overfeed people with a high-carb diet versus a high-fat diet. And what they did was they took 20 college students, and for three weeks they overfed 10 of them on a high-carb diet and 10 of them on a high-fat diet. And they were aiming to overfeed everyone by 1,200 calories. So they wanted everyone to eat 1,200 calories above the amount that they burn and use up every day so that they would gain weight. And the high-carb diet ended up being 80-10-10, so they ate 80% carbs, 10% fat, and 10% protein, so very relevant for those of you who might be following that diet. And the high fat group had 58% fat, 31% carbs, and 11% protein. And so the study claims that they found no difference in weight gain or fat gain or anything like that. So the researchers conclude that if you overeat 1200 calories, you're going to gain the same amount of weight regardless. However, me and a lot of other researchers that have published commentaries on this study have some serious problems with their conclusions because their statistics and conclusions based on them are not good. And some other researchers published a hilariously titled commentary that agrees with a lot of the points I'm going to be making in this video. So it's not just me saying that this study is not so, not so sound. So the biggest, most glaring issue with this study is that while they tried to make everyone overeat by 1200 calories, it didn't actually turn out that way. The group that was on a high carb diet ended up eating 16% more calories of a surplus than did the high fat group. So the high carb group overate a little bit more than they were supposed to, and the high fat group overate a little bit less than they were supposed to. Which is kind of the opposite of what you find in studies that look at people's natural eating behavior on a high carb or high fat diet. So you could say that the high carb people were actually trying harder to do what the study wanted them to do, which was overeat in this case. If the carb group is overeating by 16% more and you get no difference in fat gain as a result of that, then that actually means that you're getting less fat from overeating on carbs. But the real kicker is that the high carb group actually did gain less fat. So while the high fat group gained 3.5 pounds in three weeks, despite eating 15% less than the high carb group, the high carb group only gained three pounds of body weight. And most importantly, the high carb group gained 30% less pounds of fat than the high fat group. And 45% of the weight that the high carb group gained actually wasn't fat at all. It was water weight and muscle weight. So they only gained about 1.6 pounds of fat from overeating 1350 calories a day for three weeks. So just to throw some more numbers at you, the high carb group gained about 25% more weight in muscle and water weight than the high fat group did, but they gained 30% less fat than the high fat group did, even though the high carb group ate more overeat more. So where did that energy go? If the high carb group started out overeating more but gained less weight than the high fat group, what's going on? Well, the researchers were able to show directly that they lost 30% more energy in their poo than the high fat group did. So people who ate a lot of high carb stuff were just just letting out the extra calories <laughs> and it wasn't getting stored in their body. And just to put that into real world terms for you, the high carb group pooped out what would have been the equivalent of half a pound of body fat. So if CISO were true, they should have gained that half a pound of weight on their body as fat, but instead they pooped it out. So that's pretty fun. Another way that high carb diets burn off excess carbs is through thermogenesis, because when you eat carbs, it actually costs a lot of calories to digest those carbs compared to fat. This study couldn't look at that directly because they only measured energy expenditure while participants were sleeping, but that's a well-established fact that it it costs calories to digest carbs. The other thing is that turning carbs into fat is a really expensive process. It costs at least 20% of the extra calories you eat just to turn those carbs into fat. So it's really, really inefficient. So it's important to keep in mind, none of these differences that they found in the study were significant. So they didn't pass the significant threshold of statistics to say that we can be confident that there's an effect. But of course they're not gonna find an effect because their sample sizes were so small they only had 20% power. I went and calculated it. So just to explain power, they only had a 20% chance of detecting a significant effect that had the same effect size as what they did find. So they would have needed at least three times more participants just to get 
a 50% chance of detecting something real. So if there is a real effect here, like if the difference in fat gain in this study is real, and the fat group really did gain 30% more fat, these researchers only had a 20% chance of actually getting a statistically significant effect. That's a lot of stats mumbo jumbo. Point is, they had so few people that even though they found this big difference numerically, they have too few people to say that statistically it's likely to be true. So it's already bad form in science to make conclusions based on not finding a difference because of this power issue. The whole point of the study that they conclude is that there's no difference in these important things. And so people are taking the study and citing it as supporting CISO when really they just couldn't find anything because they had so few people. So if you look at the actual numbers of what they found, the high fat group gained more fat even though their experiment messed up and accidentally underfed the high fat group. They could have fixed that with simple statistics by using a model that covariate out the actual surplus. That's just for people who like stats, sorry. My brain's so deep into grad school now it's hard for me to like pull it out because I love statistics. But back to the actual real life things. I made some graphs for you. Now, the differences in these graphs are the kinds you would see in normal papers as being a significant effect. Because the lines that stick out from the bars don't overlap with the top of the bars, and usually in a study that was well-powered, that would mean the effect was significant. So let me just show you the summary plots for the study that I made for you using the numbers that they gave in the study. So first we have the amount that was actually eaten by each group. And so as you can see, the orange is the high-carb group, the blue is the high-fat group, and the high-carb group ate more. And importantly, this is the surplus. So this is how many calories they ate above their maintenance calories. So all of these calories should be turned straight into fat, according to CISO. So now, here's a plot of how much fat they actually gained. You'll notice that those bars have switched. So even though the high-carb group was at a bigger surplus, they gained less fat. Now, if the researchers had taken into account in their statistics the fact that the high-carb group ate more, I feel very confident this effect would have been significant, and they would have shown, look, the high-carb people are gaining less fat even for the same number of calories, or even for more calories. Now, here's the super fun kicker for CISO. As you can see, I've rescaled the plot so that it goes from 0 to 8 pounds, because what I'm about to show you is how much body fat these groups should have gained according to their calorie surplus if calories in, calories out, aka CISO, were true. And as you can see, there's a massive difference here, where the participants only gained about two pounds of fat on average, whereas if CISO were true, they should have gained seven or eight pounds of fat. So you could say that some of this is noise, because it's hard to get a precise surplus going, it's hard to establish people's exact baselines. Sure, that could account for a pound or two, maybe. But this is four times as much. CISO predicts that people should have gained four times as much as they actually did, even in the high fat group. This should really get you suspicious about the CISO doctrine that fitness gurus and the media and Reddit and keto people are pushing constantly. So I think what this study is actually showing us is that A, calories in versus calories out is not operating like people think it does. It's not just simple physics, because actual physics shows us that carbs are more expensive to digest, cost a lot to turn into fat, and you poop out a lot of them. Not only does this study not support CISO, it also actually trending towards an effect that overeating on carbs leads to less fat gain than overeating on fat. And for those of you who might be curious about blood sugar stuff, uh, these researchers found no differences in blood sugar or insulin between the high carb and high fat group, but they didn't provide the numbers, so we can't look at the trends. Another question some of you might have is, wait, what were the high carb people actually eating? Was it starches? Was it fruits? Was it processed stuff? The answer seems to be a lot of processed stuff. So 29% of their diet was processed sugar. So these people were not following a healthy high-carb vegan diet, but still they didn't gain as much fat as the higher fat group. And some studies have shown that replacing sugar with starch when you're overeating on carbs actually decreases the amount of fat you gain even more. So if they replaced that 29% sugar with good healthy whole grains and starches, they probably would have gained even less weight and pooped more of it out. I thought this study was really interesting and I hope you did too. So if you wanna help support me making more videos, please give me a like or a subscribe or a share or even donate to me on Patreon. I would really appreciate it. I'll put the link in the description below. See you next time.